been instructed in morals and character development at home, at church, and at the knees of their grandparents forever. Now experts are telling us to turn it over to the government because they know better. Remember, the schools are the government, and SEL is heavily funded and mandated by the federal funds. Are we really going to allow this lawless federal government to be the expert? We have to stop looking for the obvious gotcha moments, and these companies are too smart to put images and graphic inclusions of sexual references and mental ideologies. Do you have any questions, Madam Chair? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, board, now we need to get approval of the minutes. We already have the motion. Minutes. Motion and a second for the minutes. We did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, all in favor, yes? Yes. yes. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Moving down to approval of the agenda. Uh, do we have a, a card on the agenda, Mr. Manley? Uh, Ms. Hatton has requested to speak uh, on uh, every item on the agenda. So, Ms. Hatton, would you like to talk on uh, the agenda item? Three minutes. Yeah, three minutes, yes, ma'am. I need just a second. I'm going to hand it. Don't go ahead and give them one. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. So as Ms. Roxy um, mentioned, are we going to allow the federal government to be our experts? What you have in front of you right now is a um, piece of the second grade uh, Amplified Curriculum. So if you'll look underneath Quest 2, um, it says the Bookerton Founders Day Festival is only days away and someone has dug holes all over the park. Ranger Carla is sure Benita's dog Carrot is the culprit. You and your curioso read Carrot's mind to help clear his name and you use your book magic powers on a book about the soil cycle to learn how to refill the holes. Meanwhile, Carrot sniffs out the real culprit, and it's the same young woman who was cutting up the library books. What's going on? Okay. So, Ms. Jen Kerrigan with Louisiana Save Our Schools helped revise and annotate our social studies um, standards for the state. This is what she has to say about this particular thing or example. This is a discussion guide for a story from Amplify Reading Grade 2. While a very cute and innocent story, I was struck by a jarring note. Is it really biased to assume a dog dug the holes? Is it that actually a very, is it, isn't it that actually a very normal and appropriate interpretation of what the character was seeing? Yes. Maybe staying open to other facts, but unconscious bias? Really? This is a bizarre stretch of reality that teaches children to ignore their inner voice, the one that takes in information and processes it quickly, interpreting it often to keep us safe. Labeling this unconscious bias is a flaw and dangerous assumption. Um, SEL is not harmless, folks. It is literally rewiring the way our children think. So from my perspective as a Christian mom, the first thing that I'm noticing that's in bold, if you look there, it says book magic. As a Christian, am I supposed to be allowing my children to be exposed to any form of magic, sorcery, or anything like that? Well, no, actually. Scripture tells us in Galatians, Paul was very clear about this in the book of Galatians. Galatians 5, chapter 5, verse 19. He's talking to Galatians and giving them a clear foundation on what, a good foundation to go by, Okay. It says, now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, which is magic, witchery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that the Lord, excuse me, <laughs> I lost my place. I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So therefore, I'm going to leave you with this. Not only is this a battle of our children's minds, it's their souls. And all of us that are defenders of our children... Ma'am, your time is up. I understand. Thank you. ...need to pause and, and reconsider this. Yep.
let me also say at this point in time, uh, going forward on our new policy, uh, the cards are filled out. Uh, our intent is for the public to address specific agenda items that are shown on the agenda. So when you come up to address the board, make sure that your specific topic talks specifically about the agenda item that the board is taking up at that time. So I don't want to have to stop anybody or or be rude to anybody. I'm just trying to let you know what our policy is going to be going forward. So make sure you, your comments, if you filled out a card, reflect the agenda item that's up for discussion before the board. Okay. Yeah, we hadn't moved to the agenda item though yet, Greg. So I, if, we, if it's just, just for agenda items, we need to make sure that we get to the agenda item before they discuss anything on the agenda item. But anyhow, with that, uh, with the approval of the agenda, I need to uh, amend the agenda to add item six and number 10. So I need a motion and a second to amend the agenda. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor, yes? Yes. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries now. I need approval of the full agenda. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor, yes? Yes. yes. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Moving right down to personnel report. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. We have had a busy two weeks. Let me change that. Mr. Geis and his team has had a very busy two weeks. I think they have convened 13 different interview yeah. sessions uh, over the past couple of weeks and Folks, that's a, that is a chore in itself. So, Mr. Geis, thank you so much for you and, and the teamwork that our directors have stepped up and put in to, uh, to be able to do these new position announcements. So, I'd like to start out with our supervisor. Our new supervisor of safety and security is Mr. Orlando Fremont. Mr. Fremont, if you'll stand. Mr. Fremont has been principal at Richwood Middle School for many years, and uh, we're happy to welcome you to the central office in this capacity. Thank you. Our new principal at Shady Grove Elementary School. This just happened yesterday as far as the interviewing went and uh, all of the, the folks that applied. We had some great, and, and y'all, we are blessed to have great applicants to apply for positions in our district. And so I'm happy to announce our new principal at Shady Grove Elementary is Miss Janitra Underwood. Janitra. The reason we had that position come open is because our, our principal at Shady Grove decided she wanted to go back home. Robinson Elementary was open and this was home to our transfer, she actually went through the interview process just like everyone else, and uh, she's just a, she's a gem for the Washtenaw Parish School System. Our new principal at Robinson Elementary, Miss Angela Spivey. We have some assistant principals also that have been named. Assistant principal for curriculum at West Washita High School, Miss Randa Wigley. Back there. <laughs> Assistant principal, he will be doing some curriculum, but he'll be doing everything else also for West Washtenaw High School is Mr. Corey Emerson. <laughs> Assistant principal at Westridge Middle School is Miss Corey Anyamachera. Corey, there you are. Corey has served in the interim uh, this past year. Uh, again, has done a tremendous job for us. And our professional development coordinator, we're going to miss Miss Dandy Monroe terribly. She is retiring. And to come in and fill that professional development coordinator Title II position is Miss Angela Matthews. Angela? I want to say that uh, I'm tickled to death at the caliber and the quality that we're able to put in our schools and also put in the district office. So to each one of you, congratulations. We look for great things uh, that you're going to be able to, to uh, do within the Washtenaw Parish school system. And so 
From that, I would like and ask to seek permission to open a position. This is actually a new title for this position, and it is 504 Supervisor. And if you would, I think Mr. Geis is going to be coming before you to uh, recommend a new job description for the 504 Supervisor. This person is a coordinator position, but what we have done is we have actually taken and uh, the 504 coordinator will also be now doing all of the discipline hearings and everything that goes with a 504 student. They kind of function under a different set of rules than your regular ed students and even your special ed students or special needs students. And so, but we still look at the special needs part of that because they are carrying an IEP. And so because of the scope of the work that is involved in this particular position now, I would ask you to uh, open this position and it would be 504 supervisor. Uh, this position is actually housed over in Student Support Service with our uh, special education uh, supervisors and team as well as our pupil appraisal team. He works hand in hand with both groups and, or not he, he or she, whoever gets it, will work hand in hand with both groups of, um, of students. Okay. Questions you might have? Yes, I do. Okay. So this person will only work with those regular ed students that have an IAP in that terms is of discipline and... Anything. Any, any question that would come up within a 504 committee meeting, IAP meeting, if it's a, a discipline or what have you, instead of going to child welfare and attendance, they actually will be coming to uh, this particular person's office to handle that. Yes. Uh, Reverend McCoy, just to follow up, maybe on your question, that's the uh, job description that I sent you, and then you have a copy in your, your book. Those titles are listed. The big addition, like Dr. Coker said, is item number five, to oversee the discipline plan, protocols, and procedures of 504 students by assisting schools, conducting discipline hearings and meetings as needed. We have over 1,400 current IEPs, active IEPs in the district. That is a huge undertaking. So It is. Um, that is, um, I know he's asked you to open it, and I would ask for approval of the job description at that time as well, if you elect to do that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the 504 supervisor. I so move that we approve the 504 supervisor. Second. Position. Motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, as we move in that vein, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with, with the uh, job description nor uh, the job uh, uh, itself, but I worked as a 504 coordinator uh, for 12, 13 years, uh, thanks to Mr. Killian. <laughs> and one of the things that we ran into, I ran into uh, on many occasions, was special services under the IDEA. Uh, they have staff, large group of folk who work with those kids. Mm -hmm. However, because they have IEPs, but then we have some children who are listed as 504 with IAPs mm -hmm. who have some of the same issues as you exactly. know. Exactly. Some of the same issues as the kids with IEPs. Only problem is the, I, uh, the, the uh, 504 coordinator does not have the type of help and assistance that the, that the uh, special ed coordinators have. But the kids have the same issues. They have the same problem. They have the same uh, accommodation for the most part. And the 504 coordinator uh, uh, who and the kids with the IAPs are sort of given the IAPs, but they're not given the same amount of help as those kids with the IAPs. And I, I would like to think, I uh, hope that in some time in the future that we will begin looking at that, Mr. Uh, Dr. Coker, Mr. Guys. Uh, it may not be a large department, but I believe me, every every little, a little bit helps. I know when uh, Karen Member, who was working with us, Mira Thompson, uh, used to help out mm -hmm. quite a bit. Right. She helped out. And I think this is probably our first step toward that. To be honest with you, yeah. we see it growing. We see this particular uh, part going, and uh, we were having more of a disconnect between uh, the schools 
and uh, our, our child welfare and attendance and whether or not we were being able to do what we needed to do and stay within the students' rights with our 504 students. We had color-coded uh, charts and, and things like that when they would come into child welfare and attendance. And so now having someone over that particular area is going to, we think, we actually did it the past, as a co coordinator role, uh, during the past two months of school, and we, mm -hmm. we found it worked much better. That's the move in the right direction. Right. This is a, a this is a very important position. I might add, very important, like you were saying. Any more discussion from the board? All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Hicks. And I also want to just uh, alert you and let you know that we are also opening the Richwood Middle Principal position and also Richwood Middle Curriculum Coordinator position. Those are existing positions, so. We, uh, they're nothing, it's nothing new. Uh, we have those advertised, I believe, Mr. Geis, uh, as we speak. And so those will to, are two that we'll be filling as we move into July. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Okay. Moving right on to item number one. Mr. Manley, you have a card for item number one from a guest. Uh, special recognition. Uh, Ms. Hatton, would you like to address that topic? Okay. Okay, so... Ms. Smead is not here, so I guess I will, is someone, did she ask someone to do that? <laughs> you. I would like to introduce you to Representative Foy Gadsbury, who is going to be making a special presentation at this time uh, to some of our, our state championship winners. Mr. Gadsbury? Key board members, um, I'm here today from the House of Representatives to present a House resolution to West Monroe High School's baseball team for winning the 5A district championship. And to give you a little background, when I was down there, all these teams come to the Capitol. And <clears throat> I know it's a long way for West Monroe to drive down there, but uh, the guy from Santa Mont, uh, Z Zerang, pointed out the girls' softball team beat West Monroe in the championship, but when the second place the boys' team, he, they were there, and he announced the second-place team, but he didn't say who beat them. So I got up to the well and said, by the way, West Monroe did beat Santa Monica. <laughs> Thank <game."> you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, this is a House resolution from the House of Representatives, and I'll read the resolution real quickly. Uh, to commend the West Monroe High School baseball team on winning the Louisiana State High School Athletic Association 2022 Class 5A state championship, whereas the West Monroe High School baseball team captured the 2022 Class A, Class 5A state title by defending Santa Mont High School 9-6 in the championship game. Whereas West Monroe's victory redeems its heartbreaking defeat at the hands of Barb High School in, in the 2021 Class 5A state championship game. The win also gives the school its first baseball state title in 23 years and second state title overall. Whereas after being down by six runs early in the game, West Monroe rallied with nine unanswered runs to claim the well-deserved state title. And whereas West Monroe benefited from a number of incredible individual performances, senior Caleb Ross hit a grand slam in the bottom of the third inning to give his team its first four runs of the game, and Hayden Frederico added two hits, including a bases loaded triple in the bottom of the sixth inning. And whereas West Monroe's bullpen also performed spectacularly, preventing the opponent from answering its incredible offensive rallies, relief pitcher Brennan Eager was a bullpen standout after pitching 4.2 innings and giving up a single hit. He also st struck out six batters while allowing zero runs or walks. And whereas the West Monroe High School baseball team is most deserving of the highest recognition for its incredible display of perseverance during this inspiring championship season. Therefore, be it resolved that the House Representative of the Legislature of Louisiana does hereby commend West Monroe High School baseball team on winning the Louisiana High School Athletic Association 2022 Class 5A State Championship does hereby further recognize West Monroe head coach Wade Simono and his leadership of the West Monroe High School baseball pro program during his eight-year tenure 
and does hereby extend sincere wishes that the team's players and coaches continue their excellent work and always strive for greatness. Be it there further resolved that a copy of this resolution be transmitted to the principal of the West Monroe High School, and it's signed by Speaker Shakespeare. And I'd like for Shelby and uh, Mr. Simon to come up here. Today. Thank you, Paula. Congratulations, West Monroe High School. She have missed coach. Moving down to item number two, presentation of update of the 4-H program. Ms. Tara Garlington, 4-H assistant. Okay, I'm Tara Garlington from Washita 4-H, and it's been a while since I've seen some of you. Um, wanted to give you a, a quick update about how things are going with 4-H. Um, Although our enrollment is down from what it, we usually have, we're still, we're still hanging in there and uh, we're very hopeful for things to get back to normal within the next year or so. Um, right now, our enrollment is about 450. Normally, Washita has about 1,000 youth enrolled, um, but like I said, things are slowly um, getting back to that normal point. Um, I had 13 clubs this year, three city schools, six parish, uh, three private, and one home school. Um, of the parish schools, I have Calhoun Middle, um, Central Elementary, Richwood Middle, Swartz Upper, West Monroe High School, and Woodlawn Junior High. Um, we have kept things um, going strong with our Choose Health, Food, Fun, and Fitness program. That was our main focus for the school year. Um, some of those were done virtually, just depending on the situation, and some were in person. Um, we developed a, I partnered with our nutrition agents at the LSU Ag Center um, for the Hype Coalition, which is the Healthy Young People Empowerment Coalition. And they partnered with our junior leaders, which is like my um, middle school, high school club, and we were able to get some, a silly walking track installed at Charles Johnson Park um, and some tetherball sets that have been placed around the community um, just to promote healthy living. Um, we're also um, going to look into helping out the Simple Project, which aids the homeless and underprivileged in our community. So that's a new thing that we've added this year. Um, we do have our livestock program. Um, still have our photography club that Mayor Mitchell leads, and it's been going strong. Um, our shooting sports club has continued to do well. We've had like 130 members. Um, despite COVID, those numbers have stayed pretty steady um, with archery, rifle, shotgun, and pistol. Um, and I have a list of all the other educational opportunities listed below that you can look at. But what I'm gearing up for next week, I'm going to LSU for our 4-H university and that's for our 8th through 12th graders to go either to compete. They can win prizes trip to you know, Washington, D.C., Orlando, just different places, or monetary awards. And if they don't want to compete at 4-H University, they can go to learn. And there are so there are like 40 different things from insect ID, you know, leaf ID, um, just safety, public speaking. I mean, I could go on. It's just a great experience. And then, of course, our summer camp, July 4th through 7th for our younger youth. But I have a list there for you, so if you have questions, you know where to find me. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything? So, Ms. Garland, uh -huh. you, can, you can be reached at 323-2251. I can. Mm -hmm. You can call me there. Okay. And I look forward to get back into the schools in person this year. So I feel like things are going to be on the upswing. Ms. Garner, quick question. Uh -huh. On your shooting sports club uh -huh. members, you had 130, you said. Mm -hmm. What's the age groups on those? Four through 12. Four through 12? Mm -hmm. Pistol is the only one. Um, you have to be 14 and up to do pistol. But the other three are fine for fourth graders, okay. too. Well, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Mr. Manley, do you have anybody that uh, this, this signed a card if they'll speak on item number two? Ms. Atkins, do you have any comments specifically to that? No. Okay. I, do, I do have a question for Mr. D.L. Boyce. Uh, he filled out a card to discuss curriculum. Okay. Uh, 
we don't have a topic on our agenda title curriculum. Do you have a specific one you want to discuss? Or can I just interject something? Correct. I, I, what I want to ask has been answered. Okay. Um, but what I would like to request, uh, because I researched the, uh, the web page, I researched uh, the Facebook page, and on the little card that I filled out, it said nothing that you know, I could only address the items that were on my agenda, unless I've missed something. Uh, maybe possibly in the future, and, and thank you for the opportunity to address y'all. And uh, I, my son was on the uh, baseball team 23 years ago to win the state championship. <laughs> little boy by the name of Mims Boyce, I might remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's, oh, yeah. he's had a wonderful memory. But uh, maybe y'all could set up a vehicle and, uh, in appreciation of the decorum of this meeting that it has to be efficient, but possibly another way for the taxpayers of this parish that support our school system to able to bring questions to y'all that maybe are you know on the agenda at such a time. Maybe, maybe. A meeting at night because I'm sure Mr. Scotty don't want me calling him at home tonight since he's not district. But uh, I don't want to do that. But there's there's questions that people would like to ask, and that's all I have. So maybe I can work something. Out. Appreciate it. And that's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, moving right down to item number three, Mr. Manley, you have anybody about considering insurance program? Uh, no, sir, I do not, Mr. Chief. Okay. Well, item number three is considering insurance program risk renewal. Mr. Kevin Woods and Mr. Arthur Gathering. President Hicks, uh, Dr. Coker, uh, a few weeks ago we had a meeting with uh, a couple of the board members as well as Mr. Manley and Ms. Mikas. Went through the insurance program. Happy to report that even with this crazy insurance market that we're currently dealing with, we were able to bring a essentially a flat renewal on the property, which is by large the, the biggest piece of it. We did have a around a $38 million increase in insurable values, um, but we we're still able to bring a flat property renewal um, to the table. So I think um, with the way things are, that's I'm, I'm very pleased with that, and I believe Dr. Coker and uh, Mr. Manley were as well. So I think you've got... Uh, the summary in front of you there. Is, if anybody has any questions, I'll just make a comment. When when we meet with Kevin and his group, it's kind of like that doctor's appointment that you're dreading because you never really know what's going to come out of this. <laughs> and uh, this was a very pleasant meeting for the first time in about three or four years now because our insurance has gone, oh my goodness, sky high. So to to come out flat. Is um, is remarkable. We appreciate the work that y'all have put into this in order to uh, to help us make that happen too. Absolutely. So we're going to have any other questions? We we have a motion and a second to approve the con or consider the insurance program risk renewal. Mr. Hicks, if I could just um, say we're asking for approval of option number one as it's on your chart of options. Okay. Option number one, do we have a motion and a second? I move we approve option number one as a renewal for <coughs> this coming year's insurance for our property coverage for the school board through Gallagher. Second. Okay. Any discussion, more discussion from the board? Just a question. Ms. Regina, and what was the reason that you, you are uh, recommending option number one. Option number one is basically the same coverage we have in place now with a flat rate, basically no increase on the square footage rate that we're charging. So um, we're very happy with that coverage as it has been in place for several years now in structure okay. and with, with no increase in okay. premium. Um, that's where we were. Any more discussion from the board? All in favor, yes? Yes. yes. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Moving down to item number four. Manley, you have any any uh, cards on consider approval of the policy review? Uh, yes, Mr. Byron McCoy. I'd like to speak on number four. Uh, I'm assuming after we get through the presentation here, is that correct? Well, I almost said we. Okay. He said before. Okay. Mr. McCoy, I'd make it his option. I'd make it his option. 
You want to talk to me? Is it okay, Mr. McCoy, to yeah, do the presentation? Okay. <laughs> they need to make up their mind. Uh, Mr. Six Board, uh, at our last meeting, May 10th, uh, Dr. Coker uh, said that we would be developing a policy to bring before you, our policy review committee format, and that's what I'm here today to do. Uh, you have a uh, copy of this in your folder, and I'll just cover it with you. Uh, the policy review committee would be a standing subcommittee of the Washington Parish School Board, uh, similar to the, the makeup of the finance committee of how that is run. It would be comprised of not more than eight members, including the principal and parent representation. The president of the school board appoints the committee members and chairperson. Rotating directors and supervisors who are responsible for implementation of policy or policies will contribute it to the meeting, but will not have a vote on recommended policy. The committee will meet as needed as called by the chairperson. So the role of the policy review committee by the Washtenaw Parish School Board system includes review and recommend to the full board any changes and Washtenaw Parish School System policies and regulations that are mandated by state statute, suggested by board members and or employees of the district. Develop, revise, and adopt policy and regulation to meet the needs of new or changing legislation to serve our residents, employees, and students, and then make reports to the full board on the outcome, outcome of such, uh, such subcommittee meeting. Committee composition would be made up of two board members, two administrators, school administrators, two directors and supervisors, and two parents. That is what we're proposing. Okay. Any more discussion from the board? All in favor, yes. Oh, Ms. McCoy, I'm sorry. Thank you, guys. Uh, Dr. Coker, President Hicks, um, before I get started, I want to understand, like, the, the policy itself like I filled out a card to speak earlier but you never even called on me so the, the policy is just getting confusing and well, I'm, you, I'm a man that filled out a card when for for item it would have been item number six I believe the only card I got from you is item number four okay well then something happened in the transfer of that card to you so that, that's that's <laughs> a whole other issue anyway. yeah that's that's or we I, haven't gotten six yet. I'm yeah, sorry. It was earlier. It was earlier in the in the uh, whenever Miss Tiffany spoke earlier. Yeah, it was on the same item. Cards from you on six and four is only two I got. All right. Um, we tried to get an important item to you guys to get added to the agenda, and Dr. Coker said it had to be seven days prior to the meeting, and we couldn't find that policy anywhere. And I'm a man that likes to like research to the core of things, so um, I, I want to know like where are the policies being created, when are the policies being created. And who's creating the policies? Um, what I've seen and heard from our elected board members shows that you guys are not in charge. Our hands are tied has been repeated over and over. And I want to remind you how our forefathers built this government. We the people elected you the board members. The board members hired the superintendent. The board is supposed to create the policies and the superintendent is supposed to administer those policies. The board is supposed to follow up and make sure that these policies are being administered. Somewhere things got flipped. What I've witnessed at other policy meetings at other school boards, not this one, is the superintendent creating a policy, then the policy never getting administered. Now, I'm wondering, are you going to allow the same despotism to take place here on this side of the river? Because the nepotism is already very clear. The Declaration of Independent States, governments are instituted among men, deriving their powers, their just powers from the consent of the governed, and we are the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and institute a new government. The government was put in place for our safety and happiness, and I'm concerned about the safety of our children. You accepted 76 million without any one of you personally researching COVID and the use of those masks. You did what you were told to do. Your hands were tied. Now you've approved SEL without going through the curriculum. And if you did go through, through the curriculum, Please speak up now, because you need to be removed immediately. If you keep doing what you're told to do and don't do your own research, this will be the outcome. A policy was put in place in Harrisonburg City Schools in Virginia. Upon a child's request, school district policy requires staff to immediately begin using opposite sex pronouns. But unless the child agrees, the teachers are forbidding from sharing this information with the parents. Plus, the school district policy forces school staff who hold a biblical view of creation to violate those religious beliefs by affirming the board's view on gender identity. 
This policy was put into place because of federally received funds. Untie your hands. Do it for these kids. Thank you. Okay, and item number four. Uh, all in favor? Huh? Unless Ms. Hatt has some additional comments. Ms. Hatt, do you have any comments for four? <clears throat> um, so I, I was having a hard time, Mr. Geis, writing down. So the I just want to understand this correctly. The re, the policy review committee is going to have eight members appointed within the system, or is that from the community? And then there's a committee within the system. Can you? The president will appoint, will appoint eight members to this committee, consisting of two board members, two school administrators, the president, two directors and supervisors, and two parents. Okay. So, um, what about community like stakeholders? Where do we fit into policy review and things like that? Is there like an application that we need to go through or expressing interest to be a part of this process as well? Because um, the purpose of the board is to write policy and implement it and make sure that it's lining up with legislation and everything. So, I feel like this is passing the buck on to other people. Um, I, I just I'm having a hard time understanding why this is being taken out of the hands of the board members. Um, <coughs> if, the, if these people on the the members of this committee and then the committee itself has no vote in this, what why is why are we needing it? Ms. Hatton, I think I'm liking those budgets to address some of that and, and to follow up on some discussions we've had in the past. The board policy, which has been in effect for quite some time, proposed policies uh, are introduced under existing board policy at one meeting. And so those policies, the proposed policies are announced and there's no final vote of approval. And so the interval between the time they're introduced, then it gives at least under the current rules a month before they're submitted for final approval. So that, uh, according to the logic of the policy was, as I understand it, when they're introduced, to give the public, uh, board members, others uh, that are interested, essentially have a month uh, to consider the proposed policy and make comments prior to the time that the uh, policies are submitted for approval. And if I might add something else, uh, Ms. McCoy, the policy you refer to about the, the revision of the notice, that policy was promulgated and adopted. Uh, it was introduced and it was adopted back in February and that policy has been posted on the school board's website since February. So you can look, it's on the board's website. It's there. I think the February 6th or February 9th meeting is when the board approved that, that revision. Yeah. In addition to that also, uh, Tiffany, we are, this policy review committee will be an open committee, open to the public, just like us a board me meeting is or a finance committee is. So certainly we would uh, be encouraging the public to come if they have questions about any of the policies that might be posted or listed or out there. And that's when you also can have a voice and the community can have a voice in any policies. I would say that, and Elmer, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, Representative Gag Gadsbury just left, because as sessions end, there are tons of policies that come into the school systems mm -hmm. that have to be vetted, gone through, and then the districts have the ability to tweak within the law the policies that have been passed down. And so can't do a whole lot as far as making any kind of major changes based on the law that, that stands behind or governs that policy. Okay. In my experience, Mr. Noah, um, prior to about, I don't know, maybe January, maybe it was April meeting, the policies that were brought forth were approved the day of. No, now, that's not correct. okay, that's well, I'll not go correct. back. I'll go back and look. No, that's but not um, we had attended, so I've been attending meetings for 10 months now. So, but Mr. Coker, Dr. Coker, um, are the the public comment input for this committee? Is it going to be set up the same way as a board meeting, or is this going to be open? It'll follow the same comment? guidelines. It'll yeah. okay. Yeah. 
So people that want to address the committee will have three minutes each. They'll have to fill out a card to comment. Same guidelines as we would use for a, okay. an, an open meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. George, we had a motion and a second, so we need to vote. All in favor, yes? Yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Mr. Manley, you have any cards on item number five, finance committee report? Was there, was there a motion? In there? A motion I, mean, a I don't think that was a motion. Oh, so we need to go back. If it was not a motion, I uh, need to have a motion. Okay. <laughs> Well, we, we're jumping back and forth on these items. I need to get it down pat. We're going to ask for for item number motion. five. To, no, number, we're number four. No, I know. I'm not with number four now, but because uh, we're getting, we're we, we behind the answer or the question, and we're ahead of it. Yeah. So I need to get it straight so I don't get confused on we we voted on it or we got a discussion period. We're supposed to get a vote on it before we have a discussion. Okay? A motion. Before we a motion. Uh, that's right. So do we have a motion and a second from this board? I'll make a motion. We'll approve the policy review uh, policy as presented to the board. <coughs> okay. All in favor, yes? Second. Yes, sir. Okay. All in favor, yes? Yes. Opposed, yes. no? Motion carries. Now, to be clear on these items, yes. are we asking you, Mr. Manley, to ask if you got a card for this number, or are we going to wait till we review this number and then ask for it? I need to get that straight. I personally, I would think that the person that's making a comment relative to a card that's been filled out, would want to hear the presentation by the person that's discussing the topic. And then based on that presentation, they might have well, I would recommend that the person that is going to address the topic on the agenda to the board uh, bring, bring that presentation. And then the uh, person that has a concern, bring that forward. That would be my recommendation. But Mr. Noah says it's left up to the participants. Is that right, Mr. Bill? I, I think it makes more sense. I think the common sense would be for whoever's the agenda item to let them do the presentation and entertain the public comment before the board has comment. I think that's the intent of the statute is to do the presentation and then solicit public comment and then the board has a comment. I believe that's what the statute says. Okay. I, I just have one comment on that. And that, that is that, uh, Mr. President, may I add and, and remind you that you have the gavel for a reason. Yeah. And that gavel determines, uh, you you determine I how your board meeting that. goes. I know that. But I was not get the discussion before I hit a gavel. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going we're gonna to ask uh, the board to comment on this before we ask the public. Is that correct? If that's what you say. Well, I, I'd like to get the board approval. No, 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 the, no. Stat the statute says... What I think the issue is whether you do the presentation first and then you solicit public comment. I think that was a great question. I think the statute really says agree. you need to have the presentation first, uh -huh. you solicit right. public comment, right. then you have more discussion. That's what the statute says. Right. So, so yeah. going forward, that's the policy and procedure we'll follow. Okay. Correct? Ms. Hadden, right. I know you're so the you person who monitors this. That's, that's, that's my name. understanding of the statute. Do you disagree with that? I think it's the presentation, and then you ask for public comment. If anybody asks for public comment, I file the card, and then you have more discussion. I think that's what the statute So basically, the figure going forward is like the next topic is the finance committee. Todd will come up, make his presentation, and Mr. Hicks will say, is there any public comment Mr. Manley? And I'll call that person. Yep. Then you'll come back to the story. That's what the statute says. Okay. All right. So moving down to item number five, Finance Committee Report. Mr. Todd Geis. Mr. Hicks, board, uh, you have in your folder the uh, Finance Committee Report from June, or for June 14th. Uh, the Finance Committee met uh, May 24th here in the boardroom. Uh, you also have a copy of the approved minutes from that meeting that predated that on February the 16th. So uh, the agenda items, some of these uh, you've already heard. Several of these you will be hearing later in today's meeting, so I won't go too in-depth in those. Uh, the first one was the property uh, renewal that you just approved. Uh, item number two, we have decided as a benefit to our parents in the area that have uh, children of age needing driver's ed to 
uh, add the skills test portion of driver's education, which will be a $60 fee. Mr. Uh, Boyd made a presentation to the committee. That is a greatly reduced fee and we think a benefit to our students. There's an attachment um, on our report that will go into detail. Uh, we had a discussion of, of uh, air-conditioned buses and, and bus driver pay. Uh, one of our drivers, Mr. Fontana, came forward uh, to discuss these issues um, and, and requested to be on the agenda that day. So as far as the air-conditioned buses, the committee uh, <clears throat> made a suggestion to Mr. Boyd to develop a plan to retrofit our existing buses uh, that do not have air with air and bring that uh, plan to the committee at our next meeting on July 25th. Uh, the buses, the new buses that we're ordering uh, are all equipped with air. Uh, so we're, we're looking at the retrofitting of those other buses and we will have an update on that later on once he pre presents the plan. Uh, Mr. Fontana and did lead a discussion or start a discussion about bus driver pay, uh, which also led to pay for all employees uh, Mr. Manley emphasized, uh, who is one of our members on the Finance Committee, that the board would su uh, was in support to look for ways to raise pay for all employees, and that's what we continue to do. And the Finance Committee, along with the Business Department, will continue to work to that end. Um, four, five, and six are all items uh, that you will hear later today, uh, which is consideration of ad valorem tax millage. Uh, the committee voted unanimously to recommend no change to the 2022 property tax millage. Uh, number six, the budget revision that you'll be hearing later. The committee voted unanimously to recommend that budget revision to you today. Mr. Miller gave us an update on uh, ESSER stimulus grants. You have an attachment on the folder there that shows those updates. Uh, I think one of the big items that we discussed that our employees will be most interested in is item number eight in my report, which is to consider an ESSER funded recruitment, recovery, and retention check. Uh, the Finance Committee voted unanimously to recommend a $2,000 recruitment, recovery, and retention check to all permanent employees, all PRN nurses, all long-term substitute teachers filling a full-time position at the same school for the 22-23 school year, all long-term substitute support workers filling a full-time position at the same school for the 22-23 school year who are employed on September the 6th, 2022. Uh, we have submitted that to the state for approval. We're waiting on approval. This would be similar to the uh, check that our employees received uh, around spring break. Uh, so once that is approved, Ms. Mikas will bring that resolution to you to ask for your support, but the committee uh, voted unanimously to do that. Uh, and then Mr. Hempel brought forth a roof replacement schedule for 22-23 that is also attached at the end of your uh, packet uh, where you can see the, the roofs that uh, his department intends to address and also gave us a report on treatment plants uh, replacement in the district. So that is my report to the Finance Committee. Our next meeting will be Monday, July the 25th, 2022. Mr. Manning, do we have a card on item number five? Uh, yes, Mr. Reginald Fontana would like to address the board regarding okay. the Finance Committee report. All right. Sir. On behalf of the Washtenaw Parish Professional Bus Drivers, we are asking you to implement the AC Retrofit Program. And this program entails retrofitting 40 buses per year uh, for the next four years, beginning with the newest buses without full AC. <clears throat> the purchase of new, uh, with the existing full air buses, the purchase of new buses, and the retrofitting of the existing buses that we have will have a fleet of 100% uh, AC in the next five years. The cost to retrofit these buses are approximately $14,000. So we're asking $560,000 to be pledged for the next four years. Okay, we have about 270 buses in our fleet. We have 29 that are full air conditioned, eight that are on order, which gives a total of 37 buses that we should have this year out of 270. <clears throat> the current plan used to purchase buses will take approximately 20 years 
to accomplish a full AC fleet. Other school districts have full AC fleets because they see the value in taking care of the children and employees. I see children completely red-faced, sweat pouring off of them as they get off of a Washtenaw Parish school bus. Just look around. We have all acclimated to AC. Farmers aren't plowing their fields and open tractors any longer. And most everyone on the road has AC. So we're asking you today to fulfill your duty and obligation to the children, bus drivers, and citizens of Washtenaw Parish and implement the AC retrofit program. Lastly, on behalf of the Washtenaw Parish professional bus drivers, we are asking for $3,000 raise for the 2022-23 school year. We have seen inflation, health care, and wage stagnation erode our purchasing power. Federal regulations continue to impose more rigorous standards for school bus drivers and drivers in training. We supervise your children. We perform pre and post trip inspections, and we navigate bus routes. We also request substitute bus drivers, a pay increase to $100 for a full day, $50 for a half a day. Sub bus drivers are the lifeline between a sick bus driver and a busload of children with no driver. It is very difficult to supervise children, navigate the road, uh, and, and navigate a route you've never driven. Other districts have worked diligently to increase wages and we are asking you to do the same. So, what's your name again? Uh, Reginald Fontana. Reginald Fontana. Mr. Fontana, now you said that was, y'all had calculated what, $560,000 over five years? I mean, yes, I have this. If, if I may address the board, I will bring you a the, copy of, of, these, of this. Yes, sir. I like, I, I like to see that too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, how you doing, buddy? <coughs> I'm Mr. Dabo. You made to make that statement because I don't want to leave it with all the pressure. Miss May, at five hundred thousand dollars per year. Forty buses a year is five hundred thousand. Okay, so that year. that's okay. I guess what I was asking. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. we're looking yeah. at uh, a little over uh, a little over two million. Uh, over the, over uh, four four years, right? Okay. 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 It will okay. take care of this. That's yeah. Right. We got the impression that it was five hundred and sixty over a period. Of oh, we wish that was the case. <laughs> well, I thought it was. That's what you said, thought. though. <laughs> but I think you know you were trying to rush well, and beat the clock. I, I, that's right. That's right. <laughs> That's good information, though. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Montana. Thank you. Okay, board, we have a motion and a second to approve. That was fine, ask me. We have a motion and a second to approve the finance committee item number five. Also move that we approve the finance committee report. A second. A motion and a second. All in favor, yes? Yes. yes. Sir. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Now we're down to item number six. Miss <laughs> uh, Hatton, you would like to address the uh, Finance committee reports. Um, <clears throat> is the July 25th finance committee meeting open to the public as well? Yes. And where is that located? Here. In here? Okay. Same policy with public input and all that? Okay. Um, Mr. Geis, you mentioned Esther, Esther stimulus grants in the finance committee report. Can you tell us what grants those are exactly? Thank you. That was it. Yeah. 
Mr. Mantle, you have any more cards on item number six? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Okay, item number six, discussion about safety for the 2022-23 school year. Mr. Harold McCoy. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, uh, other board members. Uh, as you very well know, that over the last few years, uh, there has been a great concern about safety in schools, safety uh, on our school buses, uh, where our kids and our employees are concerned. Uh, and I promised uh, that, that I would not uh, uh, labor with this subject. But that seems to be a concern, not only here in Washington Parish, but all across the nation, where school safety and concern, safety and security is, is a concern. I want to thank, first of all, the superintendent. I want to thank the board, and I want to thank the district for it began moving in that direction. I didn't know that today that uh, we would uh, be uh, 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 voting on a safe and security office for the district. And I think that is a, a move in the right direction. So I applaud us for that. I think that uh, there are some, some, some concerns about uh, safety and security. I've been receiving phone calls from different individuals about uh, what our district is doing and what we intend to do to continue to make sure that our students and our teachers and our employees are safe in our district and so far so good i know dr coke is concerned about copycatters you know that that is always the case uh but uh based on some conversations that i've had and based on some information that i received it looks like we're doing pretty good but just when you think that you've done everything that you can to avoid a catastrophe. And then the smallest thing uh, can become the largest thing. And so I just want to uh, uh, make sure that uh, the board and the public is aware that we are moving uh, <clears throat> continuously to make sure that our students, uh, our, our precious resources, and our teachers and our employees are going to be safe, not only when they get to work and not only when they get to school, but on their way to school and on their way uh, from school. So I'm encouraged based on some of the notes that Dr. Coker sent us. And I just pray that, that as our safety and security supervisor uh, uh, starts and, and gets the program up off the ground, that uh, uh, we will continue to do uh, some of the things that we're doing and even more. One last thing I, I want to share uh, before the others is that now that we have a safety and security supervisor, my question is, and I'm sure that you can answer this, Dr. Coker, that do we have safety and security teams at each school? And if so, can what is their function and responsibility? Because teachers and even some students and, and may know some things about the school that's lax where there may be some cracks in our safety and security measures that they, are, they probably haven't said anything to anybody overtly. And if they have not, then they, they know that there's some cracks somewhere. There's a door that's left open. There's a, there's a, a window that doesn't lock. There's something. And so if so, you know, that safety and security supervisor and those schools, uh, principals should have someone on their campus, on their faculty, on their staff. That includes the janitor, that includes a cook, that includes a teacher, that includes whomever that <clears throat> can make recommendations from the school level <clears throat> to the supervisory level, from that level to the board. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Uh, I don't know if we have audience that will speak, but even before so, I had asked Ms. Nichols to kind of put together just a, a, a one-pager to say this is what we have done, this is what we are going to continue to do, and as we go into the next school year, 
Uh, we will spend quite a bit of time with all of our administrative leadership teams district-wide to go through just to remind, to update, to make sure that people are on the same page. I know that all of our hearts and thoughts and prayers have been with Uvalde and, and what has happened in that particular school district. And I can speak as a superintendent, that would be the most dev devastating thing that I could even think of for any of our kids. And they had 21 people that were killed senselessly. But for any of our kids to or employees to face anything like that. And so, uh, yes, we will be doing everything within our power to keep our people safe, to keep our students safe, our employees safe, and just making it a, a, an environment where our students will be able to learn. And so, uh, Jennifer, if you'll come and just share with that, and then I'll add a few more com comments, and we'll, we will go Good there. afternoon, board. Uh, Mr. McCoy, to address your question, we do have a crisis management plan at each school, and it is a committee of various people from the school, and each school does have a crisis management kit in the office and active plans in place. Thank you. Um, COVID did bring us several things that, that we have, have seen are going to help with safety as well. As far as maintenance, checking outside doors, they walk around and wipe them down and check and make sure they're locked every morning. Um, between classes, they're wiping down the doors, making sure those classrooms are locked um, and that they stay locked um, because that's huge. Students come in and they report to their homeroom class. This is big for middle schools and high schools. They don't congregate like they used to due to COVID. So therefore, when they do come in, they go straight to the class instead of having an open area like a gym full of kids out in the open. So, so that's huge because that was always a, a tremendous worry for us. We have fully implemented the RAVE app, which has helped us tremendously. We've tweaked it. We've gone along. All the schools have geofence. We found a, little, a few little things here and there, like when we had the fire, we found out at Riser that they couldn't have two separate, they had they had to have one campus together, not two separate, because they shared the cafeteria. So, you know, a few things have been tweaked. We do have all of that online. We plan on going back to live um, active shooter drills this year. Hopefully, the COVID, COVID pandemic kind of messed some of that up. Uh, I think that's very eye-opening. I attended the one that was at West Washita that we did two years ago. And I think it's a great thing, as well as coming and showing videos of some of, the, of these things to our employees. Um, the administrators do walk the halls to ensure that the doors are closed and locked, because I know some schools have trouble with the gym, want to leave them open, you know, even in the foyer area. And, and they, are, they are locking in on that. Um, IDs are checked in the office. The secretary buzzes people in to find out why they are there. And then the computer lets the secretary know who can check a kid in or out. Um, we do have cameras all outside the buildings, and we're working on some other things with hopefully getting cameras everywhere in the school and hopefully allowing our new safety and security <laughs> director, he would have access to that to talk with police to let them know exactly where those cameras are. So those are some things that we have, you know, coming in place. We do practice our drills. The lockdown drills are important. They do have to turn those in as well as their fire drills and their tornado drills. Um, and the fire drills actually go directly to the fire department. Um, maintenance, make sure that our, our campuses, our gates are locked. We have put in some, some gates. We're looking at extending some gates in a, at a couple of schools. But those gates are locked. The kids can go out, but no one can come in. So that when they are out at lunch, they're not just out in the open for any stranger to come up. That's helped tremendously in our schools. Um, let's see. A lot of the schools have the bulletproof glass with the office. Um, those are some things we've worked on. We have a good messaging system. Each school has that emergency kit, the school uh, crisis plan. Um, all staff are trained at the beginning, the middle, and at the end of the year. They're reminded constantly at our, at our uh, administrator meetings and to go back and represent to their staff. 
Uh, first responders, they do walk the campuses. One of the things we're talking about this year is having them come in, having not only a team here with our new director, um, not only our, our directors going in, but also having those first responders walk through and find areas that we need to improve upon, see if they find any comp compromising areas. So those are the things that we're doing just to ensure that our kids are safe. Anybody have any questions? Well, just to, to tag on to that, uh, I actually spoke with Sheriff Russell yesterday. Jay Russell, uh, we are very fortunate to have a uh, very proactive uh, law enforcement group that's around us, even in the smaller municipalities. But uh, I would say that uh, for most of our outlying schools in the parish, the Sheriff's Department uh, fire department, they're going to be first responders. It's going to get there immediately. And, uh, you know, talking with Jay yesterday, I, I can't, I don't want to fail to mention Jeff Terrell also in West Monroe PD. They, the Sheriff's Department has provided five SRO officers for us in our schools that they pay for out of a tax that they had levied. And so West Monroe PD also adds, because of the size of it, an additional SRO officer at West Monroe High School. And so what I would love, I don't know how we would do it financially, is to have an officer in every school. That's, that is the, the problem there is manpower because you can't, when we, when we have details to go into some of our schools, we can't get the details to go in. We don't, the manpower is not out there to, uh, through any of our law enforcement to actually cover some of the uh, details that we have asked to to be covered, and this is with the school system paying those uh, those hourly rates is what it amounts to on that. Uh, training is is huge. That is a big part of what we're trying to do, not only with our administrators but with our teachers and our support staff, whether it's the cafeteria or the maintenance or the secretaries and uh, bookkeepers who are usually the front line of, of anyone that might hear or get any kind of threat that would be coming in. Uh, one other area that we have, and I know we've had some bus drivers here today. Y'all, what our bus drivers have to, have to do when they go and pick students up, yes. never knowing who might be outside there ready to come onto that bus. I think they have been trained very well on how to diffuse and to, to offset that. And so um, we can work hard and we can work smart on doing what we're trying to do. But in the same sense, if you have a deranged person out there that has in their mind that they're going to make harm to someone, uh, you know, we, we, we rely on prayer and God to help us with all that is what it amounts to. And so uh, it is one of the biggest challenges that we have in a school system right now is just making sure that our kids are safe, that they are secured there, and that we have the processes to follow to make sure that, that we keep them that way. And, and one of the new um, things that schools are doing is a see it, say it platform. If you see it, you say it, and it will be kept confidential. You know, we have to be proactive. We have to be intentional with our procedures, and we have to follow through. Um, it's just like when we had the fire, the next day we had training on fire and we watched a video of how quickly and how fortunate we were that Riser Middle and Riser Elementary did not go down in flames. Um, so again, we have to be intentional. Another thing that I didn't mention was Crime Stoppers. We do have Crime Stoppers. We got the posters in that will be going in the schools and this is where the kids, if they know something, they can report something anonymously. And then it comes back to the safety director. The safety director can contact the principal or the school and they can get to the problem. And I think that's great, at, you know, involving the kids in that. The kids have to be a big part of this. They have to feel comfortable. They have to know that, that it's gonna be discreet and they've, they've got to be able to go and tell someone. So the see it, say it is huge. I think one, one of the main things, too, is that even the per persons who are in our schools have to be conscious enough and cognizant enough to 
not to become so relaxed and so comfortable that they'll leave a door propped open, mm -hmm. or leave a window cracked, uh, something of that nature. And I think that whatever is happening at the uh, with the uh, crisis management team, mm -hmm. obviously those concerns have to filter down to every student that 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 at the moment that you think that it won't happen, it maybe the time that it mm -hmm. does happen, that'll be just that one time that that and that God forbid that we become a Uvalde, our district becomes like Uvalde. Uh, so, uh, you know, quite frankly, normally when I visit schools, believe it or not, I do uh, sort of look to see if everything is uh, secured as it should be. And I may mention it uh, to a principal and casually. Uh, and, and I know that, uh, that this is not a subject that most people want to discuss, uh, but it's that time that you choose not to discuss it. Uh, I'd rather be glad, I'd rather be able to say I'm glad I did than to have to say I wish I had. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Manley, you have any comments? Any yeah, cards? We have three people I'd like to address the board on this particular topic. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll call first Ms. Patsy LaBeouf. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Patsy LaBeouf. As you know, I filled out my card. And um, on the safety in schools and school buses, we are, we're all worried about our children in general every day. Uh, it increases more so whenever we have news of tragedies that happen right next door. Uh, on, I do believe that our schools are fairly safe. There are a few things that parents yeah. and teachers have noticed, have brought up. Some can't won't say they won't come talk to people. It's it's heartening. It's heartening. It's so sad that they can see it but are afraid to come talk to anybody about it. Um, when y'all were talking about the safety of our children, does that include what's poured into their minds? What's taught to them? What's told them? What's Put around them and in front of their face daily. Does that say? Does that include safety? Is, is that included in the safety? Like, does curriculum fall under the safety of our children? Because you know some curriculum isn't safe for our children. Some of the stuff that's being brought forward is uh, not age appropriate for some children, and I believe that's a safety issue. Um, when we were talking about the buses being a safe place for our students, our children, uh, and you said that the bus drivers are prepared, you're right, because whenever we leave our children with a bus, there is no telling what could happen, who could run up, what, and same for schools. Anybody can run onto a school property. I mean, especially if there's not a gate or a person to supervise that property. Um, you say our, our bus drivers are trained to handle uh, people and diffuse those kinds of situations. Um, When we start with, you said there's cameras on on campuses and, and there's cameras on buses and uh, what are those cameras going to do if there's nobody actually watching those cameras? What are, what are they going to do if there's nobody actively paying attention to those things that are put in place to protect our children? And I see that, you know, we're saying that we have, we're bringing it up because it's not <laughs> and we're trying to put it in place and we're going to have people monitoring these people. Putting Time's up, ma'am. Yeah. We're going to have people watching these people. Yeah. 
Your time's up. It was a question. We can't. We still can't ask questions or get answers to the no, questions. No, ma'am. Three minutes is all you have. Sorry. Thank you very much, Miss LaBeouf. Byron Boyd, sir. Oh, sorry. He's talking to somebody. He's gone. Okay. Uh, Tiffany Hatton. So I, I took notes as we were, as y'all were presenting and um, everything. So I just want to give you a perspective from a teacher. Okay. I worked for the parish for six and a half years. Active shooter drills are traumatizing and oftentimes they are unannounced to its staff. So at West Washita specifically, because that's where I worked, we had bomb threats. We had a gun in the locker room. We had knives in classes, all kinds of things that we that was never brought to our attention as a whole until we had, you know, a lockdown or something like that. I understand that we're to treat every situation as if it is the real thing. But if an active shooter drill is in fact a drill, I believe from an educator standpoint that the educator should be alerted to that. And also um, that I suggest it be a school-wide thing for that day so that the children are aware that it is not a real, but we need to pretend and it be something um, that everybody works together on because um, students had to be checked out afterwards. Students were having um, anxiety fits, panic attacks. I experienced several things myself as an educator. Um, had to take some self-care days after one instance. <laughs> Um, of safety in the schools. So some suggestions that I would like to make um, and some questions I have is what sources outside of police can we utilize? Mr. McCoy, veterans, we have police in reserves, we have National Guard, guardsmen in reserves. Why are they not be, being offered the same pay as our police? I mean, our trained veterans um, probably have more extensive training than our police do. What about a parental presence? Can you have a committee of dads at each school? Um, is there a reporting uh, system in place to address the cracks, Mr. McCoy, in each school? Is there an app or a reporting page or something that kids can report those cracks to their guidance counselors or principals? Who is the safety and security supervisor? And then the other thing that I'd like to know is do principals have local power and authority to approve concealed firearms with it with the sheriff's knowledge and resource officer knowledge. That was a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to beat that clock. Just submit those questions to me. Do you? Okay. So who was the appointed safety and security supervisor? Mr. Fremont. Mr. Orlando Fremont is our new one. Fremont. And where where can educators um, I'm sorry. Mr. Orlando Fremont. So parents and students up, could technically email Mr. Fremont with any concerns of cracks in the system. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any more, Mr. Manley? One one, I guess, Mr. Roxy Johnson, you indicated on 1-11, you want to talk about construction projects or? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That takes care of them, Jake. Okay. okay. Cool, man. All righty. Moving down to item number seven, adopt the Ad Valorum Tax Millage for 2022. Ms. Meeks. You have before you in your packet a resolution to adopt the millage for the 2022 tax roll. This is no change from the prior year. And, Mr. Hicks, I do need a um, roll call vote when we get to that. Constitutional millage for the entire district is 5.18 mills. Maintenance, maintenance and operation is 24.15 mills. And the East Washtenaw Bond District for debt service is 36 mills. And as I said, that's no change from the prior year. Okay. Okay. Mr. Manley, do you have any, any cards on item number seven? Uh, no, sir, we do not, Mr. Okay. 
All right, moving back. I need a motion and a second to approve item number seven, uh, ad valorem tax. Motion and a second. So moved. Second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Como? Yes. Ms. May? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Mr. McCoy? Yes. Mr. Graves? Yes. Mr. Manley? Yes. Mr. Hicks? Yes. <coughs> So we'll move on to that to uh, items just passed. So any more discussion? Moving right down to number eight. Consider annual operating budget revision number one for 2021 and 2022. Ms. Makers. <laughs> So actually, we had the um, public hearing for the budget just pre prior to this meeting, um, and it was presented to the Finance Committee um, as part of the agenda that Mr. Geis covered earlier. So if there's any questions on the budget, I would take those at this time. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Ms. Hatton, would you like to make a comment on the budget? Do you have any more cards? No other cards on no that other cards. Okay. Top topic. All right, we'll need a motion and a second. I move so moved that we adopt the uh, annual operating budget. Yeah. Second. All right, motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, yes? Yes. Yes. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Moving down to item number nine. Finance report for April 30th, 2022, Ms. Meekers. You have in your packet the finance report for the period ending April 30th, 2022. As you'll see for the general fund, we're ending the, the current period with $40 million in fund balance. And I know I remind you all of this every month whenever we talk about it, but... Um, as you know, a lot of our salaries and benefits are prorated for the period. So as we go into the month of May, months of May and June, you'll see that number come down back to what was actually the budgeted um, fund balance for the year. For the district MO, um, we are seeing an increase in sales tax collections, not quite what we've seen in prior <coughs> years, but um, we budgeted very conservatively in the current year. And we're seeing um, we're up currently about 13% over the original budget. Uh, we have the other sales taxes there, and they followed suit with the 13.5% increase as well for the year. And if you look all the way back on the last two pages, um, this gives you a good three-year comparison of the general fund and the M&O sales tax revenues, expenditures, and fund balances to date with the percentage comparison um, from the prior year. Okay. you have any questions? On this? Good. 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 Uh, we have any? Ms. Ann, would you like to make a comment on this? No other cards. Yeah. All right. Well, I need a motion and a second to report, approve the financial report for April the 30th. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion from the board. All in favor, yes? Yes. 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 Oh, no. Motion carries. Moving down to item number 10. Select the architect for roof replacements at Swartz Lower, Robinson, Crosley, Highland, Slusher. Yes, Mr. Hicks. <coughs> board members. Uh, I apologize for this being added. <clears throat> when I give Peggy the, the schools, I left out Highland. We had to go back and put Highland on it. But it was the original, one of the original four schools that the Finance Committee approved uh, with the roof and budget. Uh, and as always, we've let the board member in whose district the school is uh, Represented uh, determined who the architect's going to be. 
<clears throat> just for general information, the Swartz lower uh, is going to be all a flat roof. Robinson is a cafeteria. Island's a cafeteria in the front, very front wing. And Crosley is going to be the whole school, basically the whole school. Uh, the fee, architect fee, will be 6% on all of these projects. And uh, start wherever y'all want to. Swartz, lower, Mr. Graves. Yes, sir. I'd like to do an Architect Alliance group. TBA. Yes, sir. LSC. We'll do them one at a time, Mr. Hicks. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, McCoy's got somebody different he wants to do next. McCoy? What was the question? Robinson? How many do I have? Two? Sir? Two. What's the other school? Crosley. Yeah. Crosley. Robinson and Crosley. I'm going to do a Robinson. I will do a Robinson with... Uh, Land and then Crosley with uh, TBA Architectural Alliance LLC. That's two, two different ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then Architectures TBA. I apologize. Excuse me. Crosley is TBA. No, no. Mm -hmm. It's Architectural Alliance. Okay. Alliance. <coughs> okay. I apologize. Yeah. Holland will be on behalf of Mr. Hicks, TBA. Okay. Mr. Hanley, you have any comments on this? Yes. Mr. Manley, you got any cards for this item? Uh, no, Mr. Hicks, I don't. Okay. What you got? Mark the blinds. You're right. I do have a comment, though. I like, like we got more comments down here that we're ready. Well, I got a motion. Get a motion and a second. Yeah. I'd like a motion with we'll accept the nominations. We got a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Second. Any, any, any discussion? Just to make sure that Peggy has this and we're clear on this, Swartz Lower will be Architect Alliance. Robinson will be Land. Crosley will be Architect Alliance, and Highland will be TBA. Is that correct, board members? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. The, the only question I had was, uh, Mr. Slusher indicated that Robinson was going to have a flat roof replaced. Is that correct? Robinson's a cafeteria. That's uh, Swartz. Okay. Right. Which school with a flat roof? Swartz. Lower. Swartz lower. All the flat roofs. Okay. What was the other school with a flat roof? <laughs> Uh, Island has both. Island has both. Mm -hmm. I guess my question, you know, I'll just bring this up for discussion purposes. If we're replacing an existing flat roof, do we need an architect? David, I guess I'll direct that to you. Do we need an architect to tell us what to do on, or tell the a contractor what to do on replacing a flat roof? Mr. Bannon, can I ask that question? My understanding, they're all being redesigned. Uh, they're all flat being all redesigned? The last time we didn't do that, it cost us. See, I have a million dollars and somebody oh, overcharges on a flat roof. Right. Right. I'm not going to call no names, but we need some, you know, what do you recommend? Okay. Okay. I guess my question is still on the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Hemphill, is a particular reason why we're requesting an architect on replacing just a flat roof? Okay. That answered my question. Okay. Did we get a motion on a second on that? I think we already got it. Yeah. All right. Okay. All in favor, yes? Yes. Opposed, yes. no. Motion carries. We are down to item number 11, construction renovation project. Uh, yes, Mr. Dick, <coughs> board members. You should have in front of you a yeah. project status report from TBA uh, on Bowley, uh, West Washtenaw High School, and the Riser restrooms. 
we had a meeting this morning at Bowley at nine o'clock. Uh, Mr. Como was there, uh, and of course, Dr. Coker. It uh, went, went real well. We wasn't where we wanted to be at this time, but uh, according to them, it, they're getting there real quick. They've already done a punch list. Uh, they're in the process of working on the punch list now on the inside. I think they said they was going to pour the parking lots. Monday. Monday. Uh, which is in front of the school, on the side of the school, and the one closest to North 7. Uh, West Washington, you can see they've already uh, knocked out that wall where they're enlarging the ag building. Uh, they've got their steel up. They're finally starting to move real real good on it. It was slow getting started, but <clears throat> we're going now. And for the Riser Restaurant, we have a meeting there tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock if any of y'all would like to attend. Uh, just a monthly meeting. Uh, all of them demo work is complete. And... Uh, should be starting it, putting it all back together again real soon. That's all I have, Mr. Hicks, unless y'all have some questions. Any questions for Kim? Kim, what's the completion date on Bowley? On my sheet here, it says 12, 10, or 21. <laughs> <laughs> do we have a completion date on Bowley? <laughs> you want to just throw it up in the air, or what do you want to <laughs> Well, we passed 21 about a year ago. <laughs> so I guess I was just trying to find out, do we know exactly when they're going to have it completed? I, I think the end of this month would be a good completion date. We were told today that this would be the last actual meeting that we had. They are waxing floors, and they have some some wallpaper to get up in, in parts of it as you come in. And uh, still working on the fire alarm system and the intercom system. And then we also have the cameras that have to be installed. So those are the last last things that that's happened. I, mean, I didn't misread this, did I? No, you no, don't. I said the same thing. It kind of jumped out at me, you know. So. <laughs> Just put your shades and come on over and visit. Greg Manley. <laughs> you made him very awkward. Mr. Manley, you had any cards on, Adam? Mr. Hicks, uh, at this point in time, I don't have any cards for any of the rest of the items on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Well, be two o'clock. Uh, uh, moving down to item number 10, evaluation of bids. I apologize for you all having to listen to me again and not have Mr. McCormick here to speak to you. Oh, that's no you. problem. <laughs> He has abandoned us for a few days, but we have three items that we receive bids on, wood chips and air filters. I would request that, sorry, wood chips and poster printers. I would request that we approve the lowest responsible bidders as you have in your packet. Air filters, we had no response on those bids, so we are, we are looking at other options and may possibly come back to you in the future to rebid. Okay. Is that items one and two? You say you didn't have any on items three? I did not have any on item two. two. Oh, number two. Okay. So item one and three. One and um, three. Yes, sir. You want to take both of them at the same time? Sure. For the wood chips, the lowest responsive bidder is Bliss Products at $28 a yard. Okay. And for the um, poster printers, you have the list in front of you. AGC would be the lowest responsive bidder. Okay. Did y'all, the mobile one didn't get the list? No, I didn't get one either. I don't have a list don't have either. A list. Hmm. I'll take a word for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, do we have a, a motion on items one to three? Accept the bids. I so move. Second. You second? Hmm. <laughs> Any discussion from the board? Where are the wood chips coming from? What are we moving on? What are we uh, one and three? 
three. One and three. One and three. Bliss you know Products. The, Bliss. Minden. I don't know what city. Oh, okay. Um, Mr. McCormick provided me with the name of with the evaluation of the bid and the name of the bidder. Okay, that's it. But we can let you know. Bliss. Who was the, who was the lowest wood shipper? And what was their bid? Bliss what? Products is twenty eight dollars per yard. And the posters and printers, who was that one? The posters were AGC, and we have a list of about um, 39 items on the poster poster printers that were evaluated with that bid. Regina, can you make a note to check with Wayland to make sure that we have wood chips for the new playground at Bowley? Because I'm not sure at that time the principal were was actually thinking that they were going to need wood chips in their new playground areas. So if we need to uh, check that out. Yes, sir. And I believe, um, as I understand it, we order the wood chips and we store the wood chips and then provide right. them as needed. So right. we should be good, but I will make sure that okay. he has enough ordered for them. Yeah, we have a motion and a second already. All in favor, yes. Yes, yes. Those no. Motion carries. Mr. Mann, you don't have a card on item number 10. Uh, no more. No more. No more cards. Well, I thought I had to ask that after each item, though, because I didn't <laughs> know we could go all the way down from one to four. So <laughs> we don't have one for 10 either, I guess. I do not have I don't got shell shocked on this once. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know what it's eleven permission to be in. You want to take all three of these? I can take all three of those. The HVAC system at East Washtenaw Middle School has been approved for for ESSER funding. It's at an estimated four hundred thousand okay. dollars. Item number two, musical instruments. Um, and of course these are across the district, various instruments that we would put together a bid and submit. Um, it would be bid number O two two three. Then bid number FS723 is disposable flatware for child nutrition. We're estimated about $100,000, um, and that is out of the child nutrition grant. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve this permission to bid. So moved. Second. Yeah, any discussion from the board? So it's probably weird. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Todd, but I. Uh, did we bring up and discuss in the finance committee about uh, putting the canopies at Sturgeon High School in Richwood uh, outside covering for eating purposes due to ESSER, with ESSER funds? I think that was discussed. It's discussed. It's not been approved yet. Okay. So we submitted that for approval. Uh, I'm not sure if Clint has or not. Okay. But it's okay. It's one of the items on the list. Okay. Good. Any more discussion from the board? Thank you. Have they started? Floor replacement, Stephen, on the list of schools that were going to be done this summer, the libraries and offices. Right. Have they started yet, or do you know? Sir? Have they started work yet? Uh, okay. I knew I hadn't seen anything on bids on it. Any more discussion from the board? You know, motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Next meeting is July the 12th at 12 o'clock. Dr. Coker? Uh, I don't have anything. Good. <laughs> Everybody have a great day. Oh, we can leave.